Well, hello. Hello and happy Wednesday. It is noontime on the East Coast and my name is Colleen Magnus and today you are Creating with Colleen. So I come to you every Wednesday and I share some Stampin' Up! goodies with you and some projects and I am on the East Coast in Chesapeake, Virginia. So today I am going to show you three great things that you can create with your Stamparatus. And what I'm doing, I'm going out on a limb um, because I like perfection, but I never have perfection. So basically, I'm going to do the whole setup, show you what I'm doing, and actually cut in front of you so that you can learn. Because my goal is to teach you. I may teach you what to do. I may teach you what not to do. But experience is a great teacher, and I promise to teach you something. So for today, um, again, this was... The Stamparatus is what I featured at our World Card Making Day event this past October 1st, this past Saturday. Myself and three other demonstrators got together and we had an all-day event. It was actually a technique retreat. And um, I featured the Stamparatus because it's a tool I think a lot of people have and maybe are not using it or they just don't know about it. And it's really one of Stampin' Up's greatest tools. So I would also like to um, just thank you, anybody out here who has ever supported me. Not only was it World Card Making Day, but it was my 21st anniversary with Stampin' Up! And um, I am so blessed that I made that decision 21 years ago. Of course, I did it like everybody else, just to save on my products. Um, but I, I soon learned that I love teaching and I love being with people. That was a given. Um, so I just started doing workshops and classes and 21 years later, I have just met the most amazing people. My friend list is endless, which I love. And um, it's just been a good ride. So thank you for everybody who has supported me or who will support me in the future. So two just popped on, which I love. Lynn and Barb, sisters, Stampin' Sisters, which I think we all are afterwards. And um, they were actually at the um, Card Making Day Technique Retreat. But hello, Sandy. Sandy, it's what, one thing about technology I love is that no matter where you are, you can pop on and share your lunch with me. So again, every Wednesday at noon, I come to you live. So if it's your first time, I hope you will come back. So it is October 5th. Um, I'm hoping we get a fall this year because it's cool outside. It's been damp. We had Ian the hurricane. We had some effects of that. But I'm looking for those mid-70s window open kind of days. So I'm hoping fall won't pass us by. But Gwen, thanks for being here. Moose, I'm glad you're watching today too. I love when the husbands um, pop on with their wives. You too can learn something. So without further ado, I am going to flip you down and I am going to um, teach you a few new things, I hope, with your Stamparatus. Um, yeah, Sandy misses all of her Virginia friends. And Sandy, we miss you too, but I love that you pop on every Wednesday. And Gwen, you already know about Stamparatus, so I want to know if I teach you something today because even I learned something. So I'm going to, let me close this. I'm going to pop you down. I'm going to start my laptop so I can hopefully see comments. We had some technical difficulties last week. Imagine that. Um, but hopefully everything will work well today. Okay, so y'all know the deal. Hold on and I'll turn you around. There's my window, there's my stamp room. And here we go. So let me just straighten you up here. Okay, let me just push that back before I'm not even stamping on the table. Okay, hopefully that looks good to you. So this, my friends, is a Stamparatus. Um, and let me see. Okay, Gwen's gonna let me know. Sandy doesn't use her Stamparatus as much as she should. Yes, I, I think you will after this, Sandy. Stamparatus was really created to be a positioning tool. So it comes with the base. You have an automatic grid in here. Then you have this black mat and you have two plates. So it was originally and still is a positioning tool that you, you can lay your um, stamp on your paper to get it straight and it's on this plate and you just steady stamp. What's unique about Stampin' Up! is that the plates come out. So now you have a whole bunch of techniques that you can do using your plates. 
Hey, Diane, I'm glad you're here. And Steph, yeah, Steph uses her all the time too. So if you have been stamping, you know the things that you could do. So at our technique retreat this past Saturday, I actually demonstrated like three different techniques or uh, ways to stamp with your stamp apparatus. And then they made two projects. Actually, they made four projects. It was two of each. So what I'm gonna show you today, I'm gonna show you die cut stamping, mirror stamping, and shadow stamping. And then another day, I'll show you three-step stamping and sidestep stamping. Um, they're not dances, because unfortunately I don't dance, but I will show you those at another time. So as I said, your Stamparatus comes with this pad, and if you use your red rubber stamps, you can pretty much use this. You don't need the pad. But if you're using photopolymer, you do want to use the pad because photopolymer is thinner and it's a harder stamp and you need a little bit of backing right here. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to die cut stamp. So I am using the Hello Harvest stamp set because this little pumpkin is probably the easiest way to teach you. And this is something that I do at my stamp clubs. Or if you're doing multiple cards, um, or if you have a die that's kind of intricate and it's hard to, to line up your die all the time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece, this is just six by six scrap paper that I have. I am going to take my stamp. And as I said, whenever you're stamping, you have your paper, you line it up on your paper first wherever you want it, and then you close your plate, and then it's where it exactly needs to be. So, as you see, that's red rubber. You can still use this. Um, you don't have to push as hard, but it also works without, without the backing. But mine's pretty dirty, so we're gonna cover it up. <laughs> Mine gets used all the time. So, you just wanna make sure, for this orientation, I'm using my corner. So everything's gonna go nicely on these two sides. I'm also stamping in the middle. Sometimes people like to put their stamps along here or at the top, and it's a little bit harder to stamp because you have this um, depth right here. So it's hard to kind of push down. We're in the middle, you could push no problem. So what I'm gonna do, is again, I'm making sure I'm in the corner. Now you have two magnets that go with your stamp apparatus. I'm just gonna use one right now, but they store at the bottom. They are like the strongest magnets you'll ever find. Um, they will snap together sometimes, and you have to be careful when they snap together because if they do, you wanna pull them apart. You don't wanna pry them apart because they will break. So they'll still work, but they're broken. I actually took some washi tape and wrapped it to make them not quite as strong, but let's face it, they're still strong, which is what you want. So here, I'm just gonna hold this down. I'm gonna take some Cajun Craze, just stamp up my pumpkin, and I'm gonna stamp. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to die cut this out. When I first started doing this technique, hold it, let me wash this. When I first started doing this technique, I used to cut the die cut out first. So I would cut a space, then I would try to line up my stamp in that hole. So it was really a lot of hit and miss. If you have your orientation right here, you stamp this. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to use my die cutting machine. I have stuff everywhere, y'all. I have stuff everywhere for just one project. Can you imagine three? Oh, let me see. Gwen's already learned something. She didn't know the magnet store on the bottom. Yep, <laughs> they sure do. <laughs> they sure do. And you know they are strong. So what I'm going to do here is I will take my die, and I'm just going to take a piece of post-it note so it doesn't move. So I will line up. Let me see if I can. I'm not right over it, so close enough will count. But I'm going to line up my die, put a piece of note, post-it note to hold that, and then what I'll do is I'll bring in my die cutting machine. And since this is a die, I'm going to use both plates, the base plate and the number two. I'm going to put on a clear plate. And then, let me make sure I've got it straight and I just want it to be perfect. 
There we go. Since I'm over it now. Okay. So I'll put this on here. And then I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine. Now, the one thing you want to make sure when you do this little template, don't make it more than six inches wide because that's how wide your machine is. So if you put a larger piece of paper in there, it's not going to work for you because it won't go through your machine. It can be smaller, just not larger. So now that I have this, I will take my die and put it back in the case so I don't lose it like I did one of my magnets. And then I'm going to take my Stamparatus and I'm going to put this right back in that corner. So this is when I start calling it puzzle stamping. Reminds me of puzzles. So I have cut out a bunch of pumpkins and when it's a solid image like this, something that's really not intricate, you can even do two at a time. So again, if you're doing this for a class or for mass producing, that's great because you didn't have to be straight when you were cutting these. I just cut them out of scrap white paper. So I will just put this in here in that little hole. And I will close this. And then I can always take my, take your pick tool. I always call it a pick a tool. This little gummy thing is great. And just that quick and easy, you can stamp as many of these as you want. They're gonna be cut perfect each time. So I think it saves time and I think it helps you get it exactly right. And I really think the trick is to stamping it and then actually cutting the piece of paper. Again, we used to take, like I would cut this and then try to take this and line it up and then close it. Don't do that. Do it this way, it's so much easier. So that is your first tip. And again, I call that die cut stamping. So let me get all of this out of the way and we are gonna move on to some shadow stamping. And that's really fun. Okay. So now for shadow stamping, basically I'm gonna to wait to show you my samples because you know those the samples look great, but I, again, I wanted to show you how to set this up. Um, so you will know how to do it too. One of the things that Stampin' Up! has and they sell, and I love, it is the grid sheets for the Stamparatus. So they come in a pack. Everything for the Stamparatus is um, on page 147 of the annual catalog. So here you have your little grid sheets and they are great for lining your projects up. So what I'm gonna do, again, I make sure everything's in my corner. I make sure this is in my corner. And I did mark it, which I, you know, it's easy because with the lines, it, it's easy to get confused. But with this, it really doesn't matter because I'm going to show you how I lay it on my paper. So with this here, I'm just going to put this. And even though I have it in the corner, always check your lines to make sure you are on the actual line itself. So I'm going to put one there. I'm going to get my other one. I'm going to put it here. And now I'm going to use what's called the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Biggest Wish stamp set. And the reason I use the Biggest Wish is because for shadow stamping, it's like I'm going to make a shadow on these world, words. So this one worked pretty good. I think if I had had a word set that was a little bit bolder and the letters were not so tight together, it would be easier and a little less forgiving, but I'm still gonna try it with this. Um, I borrowed it from Michelle, and I'm, well, again, this was one of the things I showed at our technique retreat. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to actually place these face down. And again, if I wanted this to be a perfect video, um, I would have already had them placed down because then I could have stamped and made sure everything was fine, but I want to teach you. So I have these here. I'm gonna close this. And when you do first close this, keep in mind you don't have ink on your stamp. So with it being a um, photopolymer stamp, it's going to be a little bit sticky. So just kind of raise it gently, especially if you have something where you want it. Got a little bit of ink still left from before. So what I'm gonna do first is I am taking the Balmy Blue 
I'm using two blues. You wanna use two colors, a light and a dark. So I have the balmy blue and the night of navy. So I'm going to stamp first with a balmy blue. And the beautiful thing is, if I don't get all this on here, you know, if I get, it's a little splotchy, for example, like that, all I have to do is ink it up again. It's gonna be in the exact same place because this is my positioning tool. So here I have happy birthday. And again, that is in balmy blue. Now I'm going to, let me wipe that off a little bit. I'm gonna ink it a night of navy now, but what I'm going to do, I want my shadow, the lighter part to be on top. So I'm just gonna move this down a little bit. The trick is on this, so I may get ready to show you what to do, what not to do, but I'm gonna teach you. Um, I really don't wanna go any thicker than what these letters are. So that's probably an eighth of an inch or so. So what I'll do is I can take this off and I want the light on top, so I'm gonna move this up. So I'm just gonna move it up that much. My mistake has been I've been moving it up too much. So we'll see how this turns out. So now I'll take my Knight of Navy and I'm gonna ink up my happy birthday. Mm, I might have taught you what not to do. We'll see. I'm going to press it down. Oh, just barely. Let me get the bottoms here. Just press that down. And you can see, I just barely squeaked that one in. When I do this, you can see how it is um, shadowed. So again, I think if I had a bigger letter, something that I had a little more play with, it would be easier to show you, but this is very, a lot of fun, it's very cool. So let me show you my samples for that. I actually have my first one. Hey, Joyce and Ellen, we are using our Stamparatus today. And Joyce, you may not know what that is, so you really need to go back and watch from the beginning, because this is one of the best tools you could ever get from Stampin' Up. So this is my happy birthday friend. This is my masculine card. And you can see how the, um, the Knight of Navy and the Balmy Blue work so well together. And then I had to do one for a girlfriend. So here I used the Highland Heather and the Gorgeous Grape. I'm wait waiting to see, um, because there's always a delay Couple, it's not a couple minutes, it seems like forever. But here, I wanted to make sure that was in the screen. So this is Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape. Oh good, jo Joyce just ordered it. Good timing, Joyce. Now you'll know some tricks you can do with it. So this is what we call shadow stamping. Move on, moving on. Okay, so now, I don't know if you realize this, but you can mirror image. You can Im mirror image with your Stamparatus. So let me put these goodies up. Lord knows I don't want to have to look for photopolymer stamps on the table. All right. So what I'm going to show you now is how to mirror image. And I'm actually going to create the entire tag with you because I also use one of our dies in a different way. And I want to show you how you partially cut with a die. So let me show you a few samples first so you know what I'm talking about. You ever had like one of your stamps face to the left and you want it to face to the right? Well, now you can do that. So for example, this is the Santa's Express. Remember, this is on page 17. So this is the stamp, the way it actually stamps. My Santa Claus is driving to the east. But if I want to drive him to the west, I can actually flip him around. So this was one that I did. And again, I'm going to show you this, but you can make your mirror images with any of your stamps. So this was one with the Santa Express. And then this was another one that I used for the Santa Express. And I just love these little guys. The penguin is actually this guy here facing that way, but he needed a buddy to rejoice with him because he got a special delivery coming. So I mirrored him to go the other way. 
So here we have our mirrored image. And then this is a stamp set that I, I didn't create into a card, but I wanted to show you it works with any image. This is called Places in the Heart. And I, I just love this stamp set. I had to get it. Imagine that. How many have you had to get? Um, but I'm no different. So with this one, the stamp actually, that's the stamp image. So you have your um, child on the right-hand side. But by mirror imaging it, I can go ahead and totally flip her around, and then you have your child on the left-hand side. So let me tell you how I did that. It's important you use a stamp apparatus because when you stamp your mirrored image, you want it to be darker. Just stamping it one time um, doesn't work. So let me give you the dimensions that I have. Real simple. Um, I'm gonna reach all the way over my table. What I'm creating with today, I have a two and a half inch by six inch piece of Orchid Oasis. And I actually made this in a little bit longer so I can trim it up because of the way I'm gonna cut the top. This here is just a two and a quarter by four inch piece of basic white. And then I'm using the Sweet Sorbet metallic woven ribbon. This is one of our in colors. And I'm also using the white frayed ribbon. This has been my go-to ribbon for um, tags and for little pieces that just kind of hang off of a card. And I also use it on that Aspen Dyes treat packet, the um, apple cider packet that we made. Oh, and I have forgotten to announce who won the um, church shaker card from last week. I'm gonna make you wait. <laughs> you may be on here, just saying. Okay. So what I'm gonna do first, I am going to take, the set I'm using now is the Snowman Magic. So I'm using the Snowman Magic, and um, again, this is the bundle that has those beautiful snowflake, the frame that I used from last week. But in here, there is an adorable little bunny. So I'm gonna take my bunny, I'll just anchor down my paper, and I'm gonna actually lay my bunny on here where I would like him or her to go. So I have my bunny, let me move it over just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to close my plate and that has my bunny on it. And again, as I told you before, pick up lightly when it's just photopolymer, when you don't have ink on it, because it kind of wants to stick to the paper. So I'm just gonna ink up my bunny and stamp on my tag. A little blotchy. Let me do that again. Woo, see, they almost stuck together. All right, so let me try that again. I really could have left it because I have my sample already done, but um, let's do it. Since we're here to stamp and it's a dreary day. So I have my little bunny. Once again, I'm gonna ink them up. So let me see, so Gwen, um, she just ordered the Snowman Magic yesterday. I'm glad you did, Gwen, because I think the last two weeks justified having to have that bundle. And Kay and Robin, I'm glad you are here. I already showed a few things, so you'll have to go back and watch the replay. Okay, I like that better. So here I have my little bunny, and then I'm gonna take them off. And what I'll do now is we have a craft and rubber mat. So basically this is for, um, you know, doing your gluing on because it doesn't stick to here. But it also works great for mirror imaging on a Stamparatus. Now I tried the window sheets because I thought, oh, they're clear, I can see through them. But I found I didn't like the ink, how it adhered to the window sheet as much as I do on this one. So what I'll do now is I will take my bunny let me see where he's gonna stamp on here. Yep, that's good enough. So I'm gonna take it and I'm stamping my bunny on my craft and rubber sheet, but I wanna stamp him twice because again, I want to make sure that it's a nice dark image on my craft and rubber sheet. Then I'm going to take it off. 
move my Stamparatus out of the way. And since it's mirrored, I can see when I kind of lay this down, I can see where my other bunny is. I can just put this guy right here. And you don't want to like push too hard because this is rubber and it can go around. Some people, you could even take an ink pad, just something nice and flat. Make sure it's down there. But I have my rabbit and there I have my two bunnies, one looking at the other. So if you have a craft and rubber mat, they're very inexpensive. I think they're like $6. You might want to buy a second one just for mirroring. But if you don't, just keep one side for the glue and the tape and then have your other side for your mirror imaging because you don't want that to mess up on um, what you're doing. So what I have here, I am going to, I'll decorate this in a minute, but I wanna put this piece on here, the backing, before I put my words. And I wanna show you how I cut this because that is not a punch, that's actually a die. So let me set this aside amongst all my stuff. So here I have the two and a half inch by six inch Orchid Oasis. And I was looking for something pretty that I could put on the top. Let me move some of this. So I decided, let me get my dies. I know they're here amongst, so just give me a moment. All right. There we go. They're in the chair next to me. I have stuff in chairs. I have stuff on the table. Um, mm, I love my stuff, but it is all over. So I am actually using the seasonal label dies and that goes with the Christmas season stamp set. And it, this actually was in the catalog last year, but I was looking for a pretty, some kind of a, a pretty decorative edge that I could use for my piece. Now I couldn't put it like this because it's gonna cut at the bottom. So what I did is I actually, I'm gonna slide it, let me put it this way. I'm gonna slide the top so that this is cut, but this is on the outside of my die. So this will not get cut. So that's pretty cool. And then I have this beautiful layer that I'll be able to fold over. So what I'm gonna do, let me get my trusty post-it notes. I don't know what I'd do without them. And I'm going to, I'm gonna to try to get it as even as I can as far as my two edges. Let me go over just a little more. So I have that there. I will put on my post-it note to hold this in place. And again, the paper's underneath the cutting edge, but it is not on the cutting edge here. So I will stand up and take my die cutting machine again. Once again, we are using the base plate and the die, thin die plate to go on top. A clear cutting plate. And then this piece like this. So I will lay it on here. I am going to slide in my acrylic plate. And I don't have to go all the way through, even though I don't have it on the bottom. I just have to get that top piece. So when I do that, and I take this off, I have a piece that looks like this. So keep in mind, if you um, even want like a bookmark, I folded this over, but even if you would like it just to be a regular bookmark, you could put something on there and have this beautiful edge. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna take this, and I wanted this to be on the top, so, what I did is I'll take a little bit of adhesive and I put it where I want so it's nice and even. Let me see here. Yep, I think I can, God willing, live with that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and just score a small line. So I'll use my take a pick tool and this is great because you have a gummy edge that really helps you with your rhinestones or picking up those dies out of the little puzzle piece that we just did on the Stamparatus. You also have a paper piercer, and then this flat edge is great if you have to get underneath, underneath things. But you also have a stylus end that goes with it. So this 
tool is only $10. And I'm telling you, it's so many tools in one. It really is nice. So I'm just gonna put this in here and turn it. And I'm going to grab my ruler. Hold on one second. As a drafter and a stamper, it's never very far. And just so I could see where I want to score down a little bit, I will take this. And this will just help me fold this over. So give a little bit of an edge there. And then it's easy to fold over. And I can just straighten it up how I want it. So again, I told you I had it a little bit longer because I really wasn't sure how far down that was going to go. So let me go ahead. Okay, y'all know it. Okay, that's good. Let me go ahead and tape this down. And I can straighten it up as needed. And then I'm just going to take my paper cutter, which is here also. <laughs> One of these days we're going to do a behind the scenes where you actually see where everything is. I'll cut that in a minute. Okay, we're going to keep rolling. So now that I have this, now I kind of have the center where I can stamp my words. So I'm going to use the Orchid Oasis. I can put this in here. It's the most magical time of the year, which it is. So I have that. And then I'm just gonna take, if you have the Stampin' Up um, quarter inch circle die, you can use that. If you just have a standard, you can use that. But I am going to just punch a hole in the center, like so. And that's when I'm gonna use this beautiful frayed ribbon. Again, I really do like it. So I'm gonna come in here. And um, I didn't give you any kind of a measurement because you could use whatever measurement you like. So I have these two pieces. And instead of trying to tie that, because that would make a really bulky knot, I'm just taking a piece of, um, the metallic ribbon here, sweet sorbet, and I'm just gonna tie it this in a knot. Okay. I got some shaky hands today and I even had breakfast. I have the breakfast of champions. I have um, crunchy raisin bran and I add walnuts because that's supposed to be good for brain power. I don't know about all that, but I'm hoping so. And blueberries. Blueberries are always good. So I'm put this under. My computer froze. Maybe it's tired of waiting for me to do this. <laughs> okay. So here I have my ribbon. And what I love about this ribbon that we have here, the metallic, is that you can fray it. So going back to my take your pick tool, I'm gonna to switch this out again because I really do use the paper piercer a lot. And I'm just gonna take this and just start fraying it because I like that look. And so that's the top of my ribbon. And now I'm gonna go ahead and use my rhinestones. Always, always have basic rhinestones around because we use those for everything. It goes with everything. So in a pinch, you can have fancy ones, but if not, these will be your go-to rhinestones. So I did a large, a medium, and a small. And then I'll do a medium and a small on this side. So now to spruce up my little bunnies, I didn't have the blend, so I'll have to put it on my list, but I have the Flirty Flamingo markers. I always like coloring with the thick end because I have a very light hand. If you don't, I recommend the thin side. So I have my little bunnies. And what would they be without some Wink of Stella? They would just be flat. We can't have that. 
So I've got my Wink of Stella. And I say it every time, you really can't see it on the camera, but boy, can you see it in person. And it's really cute. And now that I'm looking at this, I think I wanna put one more little rhinestone in my snowflake. So I have this, now let me stand up and, oh, my cutter's clear across the room. I'm just gonna go and trim that real quick. Thankfully the room's not too big. This is the old cutter that Stampin' Up! used to have, the guillotine cutter. That is still my personal favorite, but I do like the other one too, because the scoring blade is right with it. And then what we have last but not least, I hesitate whether to put it on here, but I did on the first one and it was pretty cute. We have the Snowfall Accents Puff Paint. So who just, Robin just said, um, could put the puff paint on the bunny tails. Girl, you should be scared you're thinking like me, but hey, who knows? Maybe great minds think alike. So yeah, so you wanna shake it up really good. That is too funny, Robin. <laughs> I had it and you know I wanted to use it. So once you shake it up good, I'm just gonna put some on their tails, cause you know, it's like Peter Cottontail going Christmas. Let me put a little bit more there. And it does take a minute or so um, to puff up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let my gun start getting hot. And then I always like to have a piece of cardboard. And it kind of just helps stabilize what I'm heating but I think it also reflects the heat. Now I put quite a bit on here, so I hope, hope their tails aren't gonna be bigger than they are, but we'll see. So you give it a minute, and always kind of move it just a little bit because you can burn your paper. That is experience talking, ladies and gentlemen. But here, we put it on there, there we go. So if you can see, this one is starting to puff. And then I have this one here. Let me angle it away from my other hand. And this one is starting to puff too. Cute! So here we have, now you wanna, you don't wanna touch that right away. You wanna give it a minute. But here you have your, it's the most magical time of the year. Stamparatus mirrored puff paint tail bunny rabbit tag. So let me get it back in there. I don't know that I had it in the picture. So as I said, every, um, every week I always give away whatever I created. So this will be the tag that I give away for this week. But last week I actually did a shaker card using the piece to you, um, stamp set which was gorgeous and it also uses this is one of the frames that is in the snowman magic bundle so another great reason just to get that bundle and the winner of this card was lynn williamson so lynn i believe you were the second one on here today but i see you um and i appreciate all you've ever done for me in my stamping world you and your sister barb so we will definitely get this card to you Thankfully, I see Barb enough um, and you that I don't even think I have to mail it. But you are the winner of that. So if you like, leave a comment on my page. If you um, like my page, share it. Go to my YouTube. Subscribe to my channel. I will draw the name for whoever will get this cute little tag next week. Now, I did want to tell you, Stampin' Up! They do have some specials going on right now. Currently, right now, Right now, Stampin' Up! has a starter kit special. So with the starter kit, you get to select normally $125 in product. This time you get to select for the month of October only, $155 in product. You will only pay $99 and the shipping is free. So this is a great deal. Now your product, you can't have host sets, but you can have anything else in the annual catalog or the holiday catalog. So this is going on, but I also wanted to share with you a sneak peek. Now this is coming out to customers on November 1st, but a lot of cool things is if you're a part of Stampin' Up, 
you actually get pre-orders because I need to have this in my hands before I can show you. So this is called the Fitting Florets. I'm hoping mine will be in by next week because you know I ordered it yesterday. And this is called Fitting Florets and it's a beautiful collection. So I will show it to you in person next week, but the cool thing is you could put this in a starter kit. So th these products can be part of the $155 that you select. So you have the uh, framed, I don't know if you can see it down there, framed florets stamp set, and you have these beautiful framed dies. You have the gold adhesive backed swirls. Those two, I'm sorry, not the, the um, swirls, but this bundle will be in the January through June mini catalog. So this will carry over. But what will not carry over are the gold adhesive swirled gems, the um, stamp set framed and festive. This is a holiday set that's gonna go great with these dies or this gorgeous designer paper. So if you want it for the month of October, you can get it in a starter kit. Uh, again, with that $155 in product, this could be part of it. And then everybody says, well, what do I have to do after I join? There really is no obligation. It's up to you. If you want to purchase for yourself, you are going to save uh, a minimum of 20% on everything you purchase. And if you don't purchase, the cool thing is you will still stay active with Stampin' Up! until the end of April, actually, but at least through March. Because every quarter you have to purchase 300 in sales, and that's before your discount. Um, but if you don't, you simply drop you still get to take advantage of this great deal in six months of stamping up and being a part of my team. So I, you know, I rarely talk about the benefits of my team, but we meet by Zoom, we meet Facebook Live, we meet in person. So whether you're here local or whether you're somewhere else in the United States, you will definitely be in on the challenges and uh, will be a part and feel a part of my Creative Inspirations team. So Stephanie, looks like you're taking the plunge. Uh, Stephanie, for the products you buy, you really should. Um, you know, it, it's just a great savings if nothing else. So I will have that in person to show you next week. Okay, so now I want your answer. Did you learn something today? I want to see those things. Did you learn anything about mirror stamping? Um, did you learn, did anybody know about the shadow stamping? I'm hoping I really taught you something. And then, of course, the die cut stamping with the pumpkins. But you can see there's so much you can do with your stamp apparatus besides just stamp. And again, I didn't even teach you the two step stamping or the three step stamping or the side stamping. So stay tuned. I hope you'll join me again next Wednesday when we create again. And so Stephanie learned about the shadow stamping. Ellen said yes to all. Um, so cool. So cool. I love to teach and I appreciate you all being here and sharing this experience with me. So great. Gwen had not done any of the techniques. Um, Kay relearned what we learned on Saturday. Yes, these were the techniques that I shared at the World Card Making Day event. So what's nice is now you have a video to watch, Kay, so y'all can use it as a reference. So I hope you have a blessed day. Um, I'm going to go visit my father right now and have lunch with him, but I hope you all do something wonderful today, and let's pray for fall. I'm really hoping fall has a way of coming soon, because I'm not ready for 50 degrees. I want my 70s for a while. So do something creative, and um, thanks again. I will see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.